Acropora eating flatworms are never a nice surprise to find amongst the branches of your Acropora corals. These tiny little brown flatworms leave characteristic round bite marks in the flesh of the Acropora that they're feeding on, and they also leave tiny little egg clusters around the base of those same corals. There are dips and things like that that you could use to remove Acropora eating flatworms, but you can't dip your entire tank and the adults, well, they're not always on the coral anyway. Hi guys and girls, I'm Reefman, and this video is all about biological controls that you can use to control Acropora eating flatworms in your tank. If you're new to my channel, then hey, welcome, and take a moment to subscribe and you'll get more videos like this about every week or so. So there is a paper that just came out from a team at the Sea Simulator in Australia, and it's titled Biological Controls to Manage Acropora Eating Flatworms in Coral Aquaculture. In the paper, the team is researching both the six-lined wrasse and the peppermint shrimp, Lismata vitata, to see how well they'll do at controlling both the adult Acropora eating flatworms and their eggs. There's a link down below in the description, and the paper is open access so check it out and you'll get all the details and way more that I'm going to go into in this video. I did another video a while ago, which was all about the Acropora eating flatworm. So if you want to learn more about the life cycle, some tricks you can use to control them without adding chemicals or animals to your tank, then check the video out. It's linked above. So, you know, what actually is a biological control? You may not have heard that term before. Simply put, it's finding and using an animal or a parasite or bacteria or something that naturally preys upon the thing that you want to control. Peppermint shrimp and Bergia nudibranches are used to control Aptasia anemones. The threadfin butterfly fish can help control a different nudibranch that actually preys on our coral. The Acropora eating flatworm does have natural predators. However, this paper is the first to be published proving that there are effective ways to control these pests. Very little is actually known about the wild habits of Acropora eating flatworms. Most of the knowledge we have is from aquaculture. Peppermint shrimp are used already in captivity as cleaner shrimp. They remove parasites uh, from the fish that are housed with them. And there's some anecdotal evidence that six-lined wrasse will also eat Acropora eating flatworms. But how effective are they really? This team of researchers per bleh. this team of researchers purchased 20 vitata peppermint shrimp as well as 10 six-lined wrasse for their research. The shrimp were all housed together in just one 50-liter tank, um, but since six-lined wrasse are very territorial, they were housed individually in 50-liter tanks. They fed all these animals every day, but they stopped feeding them 24 hours before they ran their trials. The experiments themselves measured the effect that those animals would have on Acropora eating flatworms and their eggs over that 24-hour period that they were monitoring. From seven parent colonies of Acropora millipora, 96 fragments were cut using bone cutters and a bandsaw. These were all then mounted on little frag plugs using superglue, and that's what they used in the experiment. To infest them with flatworms, they took five adult Acropora eating flatworms, and they placed them directly onto the coral's tissue before the start of each trial. So five worms per frag of coral. To test the egg capsules, they took sections of coral skeleton which contained the eggs, they cut them off, and then glued those segments onto a frag plug. The experiments themselves were conducted over four days, with each individual day being a single set of trials. Six tanks were set up each day, along with six control tanks that wouldn't get the shrimp or the fish. They left the animals in with the infested coral for 24 hours, and then they counted the remaining eggs and the adult worms that were left in each tank to compare to the number present before the trial started. It's important to note that peppermint and shrimp actually don't eat at all for 24 hours before or after a molt, so they excluded animals that molted directly before or during the study from the results so that you wouldn't have a tainted result set. The peppermint shrimp consumed both adult flatworms and eggs, significantly reducing the numbers of both. In fact, about 82% of adult flatworms were eaten, along with about 63% of egg capsules. 
Peppermint and shrimp, they don't find food using their eyes like we do. Instead, they rely on chemical cues, which they pick up from their antenna. Because of this, they actually have to physically come across a worm or an egg cluster in order to find it and eat it. And because of that, peppermint and shrimp might not work very well in a large reef tank like mine. They're just not going to find the worms and eggs. However, if you have a coral quarantine system, they're going to work really well in something like that. The six-lined wrasse were also very effective at reducing the numbers of adult Acropora eating flatworms with 100%. Every single one of those flatworms were eaten by the six-lined wrasse. However, the wrasse didn't eat any eggs, so they will only impact the population numbers of flatworms in the adult phase of their lives. Six-lined wrasse are very territorial fish, so keep that in mind if you're thinking about adding one to your tank. Peppermint shrimp, on the other hand, can be kept in a small colony, a few animals, just fine. Adding both together is also an option you have, depending on how big your tank is and how concerned about Acropora eating flatworms you are. This paper was really interesting. It's linked down below. It's really easy to read. Check it out if you want to learn more. And also, I strongly recommend being sure that you actually want a peppermint shrimp before adding one or more of them to your tank. They can bother things like LPS corals, chalices, things like that sometimes. Similarly, be sure that you're ready for the territorial nature of a six-lined wrasse. Once you've added one of those fast little fish, you're not going to be able to easily get it out without destroying your tank. I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay safe. Have a great day. If you are battling acropora eating flatworms, then hang in there. Good luck, and you're going to beat those little critters. Just take some time and some effort. I'll see you next time. Bye.